Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shack here, and welcome to another One Day Build. If you don't know what this is, I'm here playing Space Engineers, and what I do is I pick out one of my favorite ships uh, from a variety of franchises or whatever, and I take one day and build it, and I see how detailed I can get it, how functional I can get it within Space Engineers, and I limit myself to only mods that add functionality that makes sense for, say, that universe, not so much in improving the look. And today we're working on the Star Trek Deep Space Nine run. Uh, about. This was their primary exploration vessel that they used in Deep Space Nine in, well, actually for the majority of the show. I mean, when the Defiant was introduced, it was kind of, kind of, it wasn't used as much, but they used it for a variety of purposes. I mean, they used this thing, think of it like it's a, it's a very large shuttlecraft. It even had um, cabin areas where you could sleep. Uh, you could go on your know, multiple day voyages with this thing. So it was less of a shuttle going from just from the ship to this planet's surface and more for going on like long range exploration. Uh, with only a crew of maybe three or four you could get away with, which is kind of cool. I mean, they had warp drives, dual nacelles, warp drive, uh, what was it, transporter they had on there, of course, a sensors array. Eventually, they upgraded the weapon systems, and I actually have this, uh, this design that I'm working off of has the torpedo launch tube, which I'll show you guys in a minute once I get to that point. Uh, right now, I'm designing the, the doorway because I actually want this door to open. The right-hand side door opens. You know, the Star Trek style doors where they, they're actually two separate doors that just separate when they open up. So I'm building the frame now and kind of figuring out the scale and the size I want. Uh, I've walked in and out of it. Had to restart the server because I started having a few issues. And that seems to be a thing right now in Space Engineers. If I play it for a little while, I started having different issues. But there's the doors. They're kind of sort of working. Um, I still have to work them out just a little bit because they open kind of slow, but eventually get it. And now we're working on the, the kind of the basic form for it. Now, since I'm not using mods, because if I really wanted to make this look good, I would use the, the small ship block mod, which allows you to use glass. You know, you can put small glass on small ships so I could actually make the windows. But because I don't have that mod, I've actually had to do a dual cockpit design. And now I'm drawing out the rest of it. And I'm in spectator doing this. That's why you see my character just kind of floating there. Getting the nacelles down. Uh, there is a distance of about five blocks on the engine thrust damage. So engine thrust, uh, the damage is turned on in this. Uh, it, it's just I've spaced out my, my thrusters there so they don't hurt each other. Now I'm building the, like the interior of the nacelle arms that are holding them in place, making sure they're down. I know I do a little bit more detail work, work on the door, start adding control panels so I can actually activate the doors and get aboard the ship. Uh, and just doing some of the, the base stuff, you know, setting up all the buttons, making sure everything works. Now switching to the back, I've got to draw out the back, add in the thrusters, and because this is a runabout, I want it to be able to land on a planet's surface. Because, you know, that's what they're, they're designed to do. Land on the surface of a planet, head up to the space station, go through a wormhole, check out some new planet on the other side of the wormhole in DS9, and then come back. Uh, at least until, you know, the Defiance introduced, and then they just want to use that for everything. Which I can't blame them. The Defiance is beautiful. That's why it was the first thing that I built. Now, I wanted to have plenty of cargo space, but I'm not quite sure how I want to do that. Because one thing they really never show in Star Trek, outside of maybe the shuttle bays and some of the cargo bays themselves, is where they keep all their cargo when they have these, these shuttlecraft. They're like, yeah, it's on board, but is it really? And where do you keep it? And these runabouts are supposed to have a decent amount of cargo space. So I'm going to end up like embedding, I'm getting the rest of the exterior done, but embedding a bunch of cargo containers. One right underneath, there you go, the, the upgrade module that they added, kind of like a Miranda's, I don't know, that top bit Miranda's have, and that actually has a, tor a, a, a rocket launcher built into it. So now I can shoot my rockets out of there. Now I have to figure out the interior. Because what you can see now, you know, gotta get the camera angled right for the uh, spectator cam running on my second PC. It's like, how am I gonna get this detailed? How am I gonna get it to hold hydrogen? Because I do wanna use um, hydrogen thrusters on this. And then how am I gonna add in all the interior, like, set pieces that they had? They had kind of a meeting room in the back that they've shown a couple of times. They had uh, the transporter in the center of these. It's like, oh man. And then I ended up actually adding a transporter um, to this build, the modded transporter. How do you do the doorways? Because you can't just plop down a door, which is kind of silly. They should make it so you can drop down simple doors. Because you can't just add one, a large ship door. So I had to make these like, I made these rounded, um, I don't know, like hatchways. And then this is my attempt at a vanilla transporter just to give it some type of resemblance to the original ship's layout. Uh, this doesn't have the cabins because it would have to be even larger. I actually made it a bit smaller. I thought it was huge when I started building it. It's actually quite small compared to a, a legitimate runabout. It's gonna have like a couple of cabins. When you look at the blueprints on these things, they're actually quite huge. There, right there is the table. 
I'm trying to pick what color I want the table so I can put a couple of chairs in the back and then we can have like our little meeting room back here, separate a few of the rooms. That little room that I just built ended up being the actual transporter room when I dropped the mod down inside it. All right, well, let's give her a test. All right, we're back. So I should have already done the time lapse and kind of explain the design characteristics of the runabout. Not really sure which one I would call this one. It'd have to be over a river, right? So maybe this is like, it's a good river from North Carolina. This is the, the Haw. <laughs> the runabout, the Haw. Uh, that's a North Carolina river. So let me go ahead, we'll set her down and then we'll do a, uh, a walkthrough. Actually, you know what we'll do? We won't set her down. We'll, we'll bring her to a stop. So let me, let me swing around a bit. A lot of our thrust is in the back, so it's much easier to stop if you just swing the, swing the ass around, basically. So we'll go ahead, bring her to a stop. We'll get out, we'll take a tour. Now, I didn't use a lot of mods in this. That was kind of the point. These day one builds are modless builds. We're switching to a uh, third person mode here. Go into spectator mode, we can take a look. So it could have looked a lot better, of course, if I would have thrown in a bunch of visual mods. But the challenge is doing it with vanilla blocks. Speaking of challenges, though, I want to challenge you guys. This is the first build that I've done in the day one builds where I really haven't been super satisfied with the look of it. I feel like the details could have been a lot better. So I'm going to post this. You guys can download it in the descriptions. And in like, let's say, the next two, maybe three weeks, if you submit your version of the runabout, and I find it's way better and the best one that I get, I'll send you a Steam, probably a Steam card. That's what we'll do. We'll do like a Steam card so you can get yourself a free game. That'll be the challenge this week. I think that'll be kind of fun just to see what people come up with. So, all right, here you go. Here is the runabout, the Haw. She is fully functional with hydrogen thrusters. I am in creative, but there's enough hydrogen on board, I believe, to get her to land and to take off to break Atmo uh, if necessary. I mean, she's supposed to be, She's, she's long range, but only when talking about using like the ion thrusters, and she has enough of them. She's also got some atmospheric thrusters to help you have control in, of course, the atmosphere of a planet. Looks like the sun's starting to go down. I put a few lights on her inside like the nacelle pockets they've got there. She doesn't have a drum drive. That's one of the mods that I didn't use, but the mods that I did use, we come back inside. We've got a working door that I can open. She, the top button is the lock, and there's a button on the outside that you can use to open and close this and to lock it down. Let's just like pop out here with a jetpack on. There she goes. So we do have a working door. To say these pistons haven't been much of an issue. I need to reset the diagnostic program that is running right now because I've added blocks since I uh, originally started it up. So that's why you're seeing some areas are damaged. That is a live representation of the ship though. I highly recommend that script, it is fantastic. You've got your two cockpits because I'm not using the small block mod. I have to use cockpits if I wanna be able to you know, look out through these. There are no small block windows. It makes me sad. It's something that I still wish they would add. We do have chairs. Why don't we have small block windows? That would make the things that we can build way cooler so we could design our own cockpits using the remote block to access all the systems. But anyways, leaving the, the bridge, the command room, I guess. We'll go ahead and shut the doors. Oops, I just locked them. I'm gonna shut the doors there. We walk into the first back room where we have all of our power. Our hydrogen generation is built into the roof and this is my vanilla transporter. <laughs> Doesn't actually do anything, but we have a transporter that does do something. We'll walk back here, our dual reactor system. We've got a lot of power here, very uh, Federation-esque. Double up on all the systems. You gotta have your backups of your backups. And then our single man transporter, which we're going to experiment with. This is a pretty cool mod. This allows you to transport other players, um, if they are part of your faction, you can transport onto different platforms. You can go to GPS points. You can transport to other transporters, I believe. Let's see if we access it. We'll actually be able to see exactly what comes up. Transporter, yeah, you can lock on to different locations. We've got a bunch of teleport two. I think these transport twos are parts of the planet. See, they're only like, uh, player two, and then you can choose these different points. So we can do player two, Captain Shack. Um, we can go to a GPS coordinate, which would be Captain Shack one, I guess, um, which is I think the only GPS coordinate that I have set up. I thought I had another one though. Maybe not. No, we'll have to check it. But yeah, there we go. There's a transporter to and from. Kind of neat, kind of neat. And then our back room where you have the meetings, which they did a few episodes like this. I think they did one in the back of the runabout where, no, that was a next generation episode that I'm thinking of where time was like passing faster in pockets. But 
Oh shit, we've got a meteor storm inbound. I forgot I turned that on. I was testing the meteor. Okay, let's get to the get to the command room. Um, I was testing the holy shit, yeah. The access mission or er, come on, controls, kick on. Oh boy. Bring her around, bring her around. I was messing around with the newest patch, which changed the effects. Now we do have shields. You know what? Let's go ahead and stop. Let's see if we'll take a hit. Because we do have shield systems on this thing. I do have the shield mod installed, and I'm using the smaller bricks. Uh, but this is on like Armageddon levels too. Let's see if we can like move in front of them. Um, I want to see if the shield will stop meteors. Now I want to know because it used to not. They weren't considered like normal damaged weapons. And if I run over here, uh, those are the the small ship shield like modules that I've installed all the way down this length here. So let's get back inside. Are there more asteroids coming in? Uh, no, it looks like we have managed to survive. Sadly, I kind of wanted to take the hit. Let's go ahead and gain a little altitude. Because the most recent patch, they changed it so before all asteroids, whether you were in an atmosphere or not, would be on fire. And that doesn't make any sense, right? It looks weird. In like the dead of space, you've got these fiery rocks coming down. Uh, so they change it so once it enters the uh, the atmosphere of a planet, then they actually have this cool fiery effect as they come in, and they made it so, and this one isn't good for my purposes of testing, um, but they won't just like straight up target your, your structures or your ships. There is a bigger chance that they will miss. It's a little bit more random. And it had, it really needed to be updated because it seemed like those asteroids were just dead on coming at you all the time. But for being on Armageddon, which I had forgotten to turn off, it's not a lot coming in here. She is fully capable of landing. She's got landing gear inside the nacelles and a couple in the actual body of the ship. But yeah, there you go, guys. She's got a torpedo launcher and she's got your basic phasers. Phasers being the miniguns. They work out just fine. And then torpedo tubes. Which you need to be a little careful because if you try to pull up real fast while firing these, there is a small chance you may hit your hydrogen tanks. Not something you want to do. Looks cool though. Switch over to third person. Get a look at her firing. Fire torpedoes in that module on the top that they added later in the season. I really do dig that. Then we can burn off. Now, you wouldn't be sitting here hovering with the hydrogen thrusters on like this. You'd want to go ahead and just land quickly. Playing around in the third person camera. Uh, you'd want to land quickly because you're going to be burning your hydrogen really fast in creative or in survival. We're in creative right now, though. So we won't be burning it too quickly, especially with the three large thrusters on the back. I have to test this in survival to see how, how long this would actually run. You don't need all of those, though, to land. I'd probably just run the bottom ones, and then you should be okay. You shouldn't need the back ones to land on a planet. The bottom ones should be just fine, but let's test out. We're gonna set a collision course with the planet and let's emergency beam out, hopefully to planet Bob. Oh, let me go. Oh, I turned off my jetpack. Terrible plan. Get inside the transporter. Oh, no, what was that? Can I get over it? No, because we're falling too fast. Come on, quickly. We're dropping. And I can't access everything because everything's turning off and on and I don't understand why. What is going on? I can't get to the bridge. I can't get in control of the ship and I keep accessing everything but what I want. There we go. All right, let's get her to a stop because for whatever reason, she's acting really derpy. All right, we've slowed down to just about nothing. Fastest way to turn her around. Turn off my jetpack maybe. Wow, it, it does not like it when you turn off your jetpack. Are we are we rolling right now? Is that what's going on? Eh, back into the cockpit. No, we're fine. Just, just flatten it out a little bit. Now can we walk around? Not really. Like, super slowly we can walk around. There we go. Accessing the transporter system. Transport. Captain Shack 2. The GPS coordinate, Captain Shack 1. Do I not have any other GPS coordinates? I don't. Oh boy. I don't know where this actually goes. I think it's on the planet's surface. We're gonna try it out though. Control panel, Captain Shack 1. Sounds good. Let's teleport. Beam us out. What? What? Okay. 
And it tell oh, it transported me like 200 feet off the ground. Ah! <laughs> but there you go. If I had the location set that was like ground level, it would have been fine. It would have transported me down to the ground. I actually don't know where we left the runabout now. Now I'm stranded on Planet Bob all over again. Damn it. And I think the game just froze up again. Great. So, a couple things that I've learned, guys. One, do not run in unrealistic mode for asteroids. It will freeze. The game just crashed again. And it's been doing that to me all day today, trying to record this and just do some like work on it and test out the asteroids, sadly. Two, I, the runner out looks all right, but I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Um, and this was just a quick video now that I'm back from Canada and there's Solaris and all that upcoming. So I will see you guys in the next video. Later, everybody.